On the phone with us now is journalist Alan Hall, who is in Berlin. Alan, what can you tell us? Good evening. Well, as you quite rightly said in the last few minutes, the police have said they have arrested somebody believed to be the truck driver, not confirmed. He fled from the scene after ploughing his lorry into this crowd. This Christmas market is, a, is an assembly of wooden huts made to look like an alpine village. They sell candy, sausages, mulled wine, and it's a great Christmas draw from, for both Germans uh, and foreign tourists, and I suspect that there will be foreigners among the dead. 50 injured, 9 dead. The whole place has been sealed off. It is a sea of blue lights. The only vehicles that are getting through are ambulances, police cars, and fire rescue vehicles. Um, a great jolt to the German psyche. It's been a long time coming, but it's finally arrived. The German intelligence has received information over the last months and weeks that ISIS, uh, Islamic State, had put Germany high up on its attack list. And tonight it seems to have pulled it off. And Alan, as we know, German police have recently rounded up a series of people for planning attacks on Christmas markets. Um, and just in the last week, a 12-year-old boy tried to detonate a nail bomb at a Christmas market. So as you said, um, here's this reality is finally here, unfortunately, for Germany. Tell me a little bit about this area and how hard would it be for this truck to plow into this market? Well, the area is, is which the shopping uh, area in West Berlin. It, it is opposite a store called Cardeve, the Kaufhaus des Westens, or the, this, the um, department store of the West, which is the biggest department store on the European continent. And it is uh, fancy, it is chic, and every Christmas time for about a month, this, there's a sort of island in the middle opposite, opposite the store that is turned into this little Christmas market village. And so then uh, this is a pedestrian zone. So the truck, unless it had gone out of control, would have had to deliberately steer itself into the crowd. And this is what the police are saying happened. So it was a, a moving bomb, if you like, a moving missile. Uh, struck numerous people, lots of social media sites showing people lying all over the road in various states of agonies. And uh, it's, it's still very confused because it only happened about 8 o'clock this evening. Um, but as I say, the latest is they, they think they've caught the driver. And as you said, police, they think they've, they've arrested somebody, somebody that he was the driver. Did you say that he uh, ran away from the scene at first? Is that what they're reporting? He did, yes. He, he, the, it's a Scania truck, uh, um, a lorry made in Sweden, and he escaped from the cab. As you would call it a semi-truck. He jumped out of the cab. He, made, he ran off. Um, but the, the latest news reports are that they have caught him, and so it will be uh, – it's now – will be left to determine, you know, was he radicalized here? Is he a German? Is he a refugee? As you know, tensions have risen in the last 18 months or so in Germany because 1.2 million people, um, refugees, have come to Germany, and this has caused great social tension. Uh, several failed or semi-successful uh, terrorist attacks since then, but this by far the worst. And, Alan, as you said, it is a chaotic scene there. Um, kind of paint a picture for us now. Has it calmed down a little bit? Are there still um, numerous uh, emergency vehicles there? Are they still treating uh, w the injured? Yes, it, there is. And I've just heard, heard the latest report from a colleague that the truck has Polish number plates. The border with Poland from Berlin is less than 80 miles away. So it may be that the truck was stolen in Poland or um, was actually, um, you know, rented there and driven across the border uh, for this attack. The whole scene in terms of uh, uh, it is still a rescue operation. All the roads leading to it have been closed by police. You can't, I, I physically can't get uh, within about half a mile of the actual site. I'm talking to you from a hotel um, a few blocks away. Uh-huh. And, you know, what is the, the fear like um, going into these open markets in Berlin and uh, in other areas across Europe? As you mentioned, um, people have fear that this would eventually come to Germany. German intelligence had warned, had warned that of these 1.2 million refugees that came into the country, 
that there were probably several hundred who were Islamic State sleepers, that the people just waiting to be activated to um, commit an outrage on behalf of their paymasters back in the Middle East. Um, not only in Germany, also in France, which has borne the brunt of Islamic terror. Um, but Germany was always uh, a big target for them. The returnees, as they call them, these radicalized young men who went from Germany to fight on the, uh, for ISIS, uh, many of them have come back. Some of them have been turned by German intelligence, and those who have been turned all said that Germany was a prime target uh, for the Islamic State, and, uh, and they were working very hard to bring off um, a, a carnage on the, on the scale um, that, that we have seen in France. Well, there's nine dead and there's 50 injured. Um, one dead and one injured, of course, is too many. It's not on the scale of France, but it's certainly a centre a huge jolt into the German psyche this evening. And Angela Merkel, who is fighting next year for a fourth term in office, and this is the worst possible news that she could receive because her, her policy of opening the doors to these people without any checks, without any uh, background, um, you know, looking at records or anything like that, um, has caused has caused her great political damage and this can only cause her more. Right. Alan Hall, a journalist for us in Berlin. Um, thank you so much for all of the information. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.